daughter. I'm gonna have to put this mask on because that mask is mother's. That's fine. That's all right. Um, first I would like to say that I don't know if you all have a hero, but I have. Ms. Tyler, I'm gonna give you permission um, to take the, the screen off. There's nobody within six feet. Thank you. you. I'm just having a hard time hearing you. Just, I think it's appropriate to make an exception in this case. Go ahead. Thank you. I don't know if you all have a hero, but I, I have heroes. And it's such an awful situation to even have to have heroes. But I thank all of you all sitting here and everyone back there that are still here for five days and seven days. And you've been here every time. Every single one of you are my hero. As a little girl, I watched how much Lisa loved Joel Michael. I wanted to be that mom. Joel Michael was Lisa's entire world. Most girls dream of weddings, I think. I don't know. But I dreamed of being Lisa with the picture-perfect family, with the dad coming home at five and me having dinner. I wanted to love as strong as Lisa loved. The dinner at dad's and Lisa's home included me, which was so different. We, we would stay there in the summer, but we were at my mom. My dad lived like six hours or hours away. And so mom, we stayed at my mom's, um, included me, which was so different at my house where we grew up poor and it was just pasta. So when we went to that house, it was like meat and candy and, um, they provided a loving and caring home with all the extra stuff. Some of this I have to, I can't read that sentence either. My dreams were to spend the next 40 years at Thanksgiving and Christmas laughing with my parents. My dreams were to move Lisa and dad into my home. I would even banter with them about them moving into my home when they were old to model for my kids how to take care of your parents in the last days because I'm moving in with my kids when I get old. But I wanted them to see that, like I got to see my mom take care of her parents. I got to see my mom stand by her her parents' um, bed when they died, and I wanted that. My dream was to hold my mom's, Lisa's hand as she took her last breath. My dream was to hold my dad's hand as he took his last breath. People take moments like that for granted, but I wanted those moments with my whole soul. Not only that, the kid's childhood was taken away. I am angry for my dreams being destroyed, but, I, but I'm not the only one that's been affected. This has impacted my kids, and for that, I will never be able to forgive. I rest easy knowing that God is okay with my choice not to, to forgive someone that has murdered my parents. I had to spend the last four years saving my kid's soul, their spirits, in their hearts. I have spent the last four years cleaning up a mess. No one will ever know what it's like to have, to be a child having to hear that your grandmother's head was cooking in a pot because you, because the the person that did it had the perfect childhood, He, especially not a man with that childhood. And on a super selfish note, you will never know, not meaning you, like meaning um, what it is like to have to tell your, ch their, your children that their grandparents have been chopped up and put in acid. Can the boys ever, can my kids ever trust again? Would I ever really be able to trust again? I was always so proud of Lisa and I told everyone that she was the best stay at home mom. I mourn for my dad and Noah. I keep talking about Lisa. <laughs> I mourn terribly for my dad, I do, but I grieve and rage for Lisa. I rage for her from the mother's point of view. I cry for her because I wonder if when she realized the love of her life, the only son she had, the child that she gave her entire life to was about to murder her. I have to edit that. Stop right there. I wonder if at that moment when her heart was broken, did she even fight? Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry.